In today's Oracle's Mobile Cloud Service episode, you're going to learn how to configure your native iOS applications written in Objective-C using Apple's Xcode to take advantage of the MCS Mobile Client SDK. I'm Chris Muir, I'm from the Oracle Mobile Platform team, thanks for joining us. To make working with MCS easier, Oracle's provided an MCS SDK for iOS developers. While the MCS APIs such as push notifications and storage and sync are available via remote REST calls, which you can call by handwritten Objective-C code, the SDK essentially provides native libraries for iOS and Objective-C and functions to greatly simplify the amount of code you, the iOS developer, needs to write in order to interact with MCS. In this episode, we're going to look at the steps needed to configure the MCS Mobile Client SDK in an iOS app, a relatively painless exercise. The steps are always the same whether you do it in a new application or retrofit in an existing application. Now for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume you've already created a mobile backend in MCS and configured a Realm and mobile user for this episode. Okay, so let's start with Apple's Xcode and create a new project via the File New Project options. For the purposes of this demo, we're just going to build a simple application today. This means that we'll select the single view application template. From here, we then specify the name we want for the application. And we shouldn't forget to pick an organization identifier that matches the profile and certificate that will be used to sign the app. In addition, you select Objective-C as language, though to be truthful, if you select Swift, pretty much all the options are the same. But for this recording, we're going to focus on Objective-C. From here, we then select the folder where we want to create the project. And once done, Xcode creates the basic structure of our project. What you see here are the properties for the Xcode project we just created. In the identity section, we should pick the appropriate Apple developer identity in the team drop-down list. Now, because we're just doing a demo app here, we will run this in the iOS simulator and we're gonna skip this step for the recording. Okay, now we've got an app source code to work with. Now, before we continue modifying the iOS app, we need to register against the mobile backend in MCS. You do this by accessing the MCS mobile backend in the MCS user interface, selecting the settings page, and then either modifying the client application that was created by you by default when the mobile backend was created, or you create a new one. Now, we're gonna create a new one here so you get to see the process in action. So here we are in the settings page of the mobile backend and we're going to select the register another application link. And in the resulting dialog select iOS. From here we type in the application, we'll use my MCS demo, as well as the full package name for the application. We define com acme my MCS demo in turn. Once you're done, you'll see the application registered against the mobile backend, as well as an application key generated by MCS. Above that, you will see the base URL, mobile backend ID, and anonymous key. You will need all of these later on, so don't close your browser window. Great, so once we have registered our app with MCS and we have our iOS app source code ready to rock and roll, we're ready to import the libraries from the MCS SDK. Now, the iOS SDK can be downloaded via the MCS user interface. So via the MCS user interface link here, you will download a zip file which contains the MCS client SDK libraries, code and configuration files we want to extend our iOS app to make calling MCS relatively simple. Once downloaded, you should unzip this file and rename the base directory MCS. Returning to Xcode, we then simply drag the MCS directory from the OS X binder into our target project as the first node. In the resulting dialog, we ensure copy items if needed is selected, then we select finish. If we expand the new MCS directory in our Xcode app, under the subdirectories, we can see relevant libraries that were included in the import. Now Oracle's built the SDK in a modular fashion. This means you don't have to import all the libraries in your project, thus you can reduce the app's package size and memory footprint. Simply you need to pick the ones that you need. The mandatory libraries are libidm mobile SDK and libomc core. 
Now, the other libraries are optional based on what platform APIs you're choosing. You can see the names reflect the platform APIs. And if you're not going to use one of those platform APIs, you can delete the relating library. However, take note that the storage API, libomc storage, has a one-way dependency on libomc synchronization. So you must include both if you use the storage API. Finally, the libidm mobile SDK library has dependencies on core Apple frameworks. In the project settings editor, go to the linked frameworks and library section at the bottom. As you can see, the libraries we imported are already listed here. Now we click on the plus button to add the frameworks and we add systemconfiguration.framework, security.framework, and core location.framework. We also need to add a linker flag. This is done by going to the build settings section of the project settings, ensuring that the all button is selected so we can see all the settings. Then we scroll down to the linking section, double click on the other linker flags heading and add dash capital O lowercase b j capital C so dash of C to the list of flags. Be careful to ensure that you type the flag carefully as you see it here because you will not get an error message if there is a typo but your application will mysteriously fail at runtime. And last but not least still under build settings we look for search paths then user heading search paths and we need to add an entry dollar project underscore directory forward slash mcs forward slash release iphone os and we set this to recursive the dollar project directory directive here will resolve to where your project lies on your file system in my case under my users desktop directory then just above that set the always search user paths option to yes the combination of these settings allow Xcode and linking compile time to find the header files for the SDK libraries. Now once you've imported the libraries, the next step is to configure the iOS app to connect to our MCS backend. And this is done through a plist file called omc.plist. A sample omc plist file is included in the MCS SDK you installed into your application earlier under the documentation directory. Simply drag this file to the root of your application. If you double click on this file, you get a nice hierarchical editor. However, I must admit, I find this pretty painful to work with. So instead, I suggest right click on the file and select open a source code. From here, you can see the OMC plist file is just an XML file with various elements. Once you have this, now you can copy in various values from the mobile backend MCS user interface back in that browser window we told you not to close earlier. Now I'm going to cheat and copy and paste a completed OMC plist into this file so you can see the values without me having to laboriously flip backwards and forwards from the MCS user interface to Xcode copying one value at a time. The first key you see is your mobile backend name, forward slash and the version number of your mobile backend. Then for the backend, if it is the default backend for the app, you can either signal true or false. From there, you also need to include the base URL from the mobile backend. From there, for the back end, you then plug in the app key, the anonymous key, and the mobile back end ID from the MCS UI. And finally, you can also set the logging level of the MCS SDK. For our purposes here in the demonstration, we'll change this to debug. Well done. At this point, you've actually completed all the necessary steps to configure your iOS app with the MCS SDK. Surely that's worthwhile going up to your boss and asking for a pay rise. Now, rather than stopping there, we'll also show you how to implement authentication logic as most applications will need to do this. Now, there are various ways to do authentication in MCS, depending if you want to build your own custom login page or to make, uh, prefer to make use of what the client SDK provides to you. Now, we're going to do the latter here. I will now show you a very simple implementation of authentication provided by the client SDK. So first, in returning to our application, we're going to add a login button to the only page in our application. So we'll click on the main storyboard in the Project Navigator, drag and drop a button in from the object library, click on it, and in the Attributes Inspector, change the button's title to Login. 
Now let's add an action to launch some code when the user clicks on the button. We'll add the handler in the view controller class used by the view. So we do this by opening the assistant editor, view assistant editor show, and ensure that the view controller M file is displayed on the right. We hold down the control key, click on the button, and drag the result into our code window. In the dialog, we specify start authentication as the name of the action and select UI button as the type. At this point, we're ready to implement our authorization logic. And this is accomplished through the following code. First, we import the following MCS classes. We import OMC authorization, OMC mobile backend, and OMC mobile backend manager. And then we're going to add the following code. And I'm going to cheat, just copy and paste this in bolt and explain what it does. The first line obtains a singleton instance of the backend manager. To do this, we call the shared manager class method. The second line of code is to retrieve an instance of the target backend. In this case, we're simply using the default backend as flagged in the OMC plist file that we mentioned earlier. To authenticate the user, we need an OMC authorization object. Those can be created by calling the authorization method. OMC authorization will perform the actual authentication for us through the authenticate method. There are several overloads for this function, and in this case, we're simply going to use the one that provides the login page for us. To call the authenticate method as I described, we need a pointer to the NS error object. The pointer must be of type auto releasing with two underscores. From here, the actual method call is pretty straightforward. First parameter specifies the view controller on top of which the login dialog will be shown. We'll put self here since we want the dialog to appear on the top of this screen. The second parameter supplies a custom view for the login dialog. In this case, we'll specify nil, which means the SDK will supply the login dialog for us. Third is the error pointer. And finally, last, a reference to the optional handler, which would execute after a successful authentication. For our purposes here in a demo application, we're going to leave this as nil too. The final step to do is call the authenticate method by the login handler we created earlier. And that's it. Let's see how this looks at runtime. In running the app and logging in with valid credentials, thanks to us setting the debug logging option in the OMC plist file, we can see in Xcode the successful login message. Alternatively, if we log in with invalid credentials, you can see the associated error in the simulator. There you go, now you're really done, and you can really justify that pay rise with your boss. So that completes how to authenticate your mobile user from the MCS SDK. From here, you would start calling various other MCS SDK platform APIs, but we're not going to do that here because we have a series of other episodes covering this in detail. You've got plenty more to watch. So, as you've seen, setting up the MCS client SDK in an iOS application is pretty straightforward, you'll agree. Don't forget that you also have the possibility to download a quick start application from the MCS website if you don't want to set up things yourself. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll catch you in the next one very soon.